Hello and welcome to another jungle video and in this one we are going to talk about how you can be an S plus jungler and give a 10 out of 10 MVP performance every single game. Now on the face of it that seems like a simple topic that means nothing. On the other hand if you look deeper you would notice that most of the videos we cover are all high elo, this channel and the other channel. The core ideas in those videos if you translate them to your elo and game will always help you climb although that's difficult to visualize. At the same time, with all the jungle changes upon us, it's important we review the things that will never change, no matter what. They can change the camp's spawn timers, they can change the experience in gold, but in order to be an S plus jungler, to carry every single game as best you can, then you need to have certain principles under your belt that don't change no matter what Riot does. So we will go over all of those things in this video, a total jungle carry guide, so you can get those S pluses and MVPs. And of course, if you like the educational content and of course the new jungle changes coming up, we will have best junglers in other videos. Please consider leaving a like and of course subscribing. Coaching links are in the description. And now without hesitation, let's begin. So for this video, I chose a warrior game going up against a Graves, obviously a nice matchup. But the principles are here, you cannot AFK farm, you cannot simply scale by accident, you have to be proactive. And of course, it will show you that when enemy junglers make mistakes, when teams make mistakes, when your lanes feed, how you can still be that 1v9 carry no matter what champion you're playing. And when you do have games where your teammates are competent, firstly, you thank the universe for this blessing of luck. And secondly, you just win more. And in this game, the jungle will get an S plus and a 10 out of 10 on OP.GG. Nothing to scoff at, so how does he do it? Now on the outset, I'm not seeing a lot of people think about where they're prioritizing level 1, what they want to do in the game. The three fundamentals of jungling can be summarized as follows. Our job is to secure and be around for objectives. Our job is to make sure lanes are impacted, fed and happy, at least as much as we can do when they're not inting. But most importantly, it's about restricting, denying and preventing the enemy jungler from achieving any of these things. This means starting on the blue and going down is a great idea. Why? Because there's a Leona Ezreal. They have a Karma and a Kai'Sa. With Leona and as you are Warwick, you do have CC, you do have damage, you do have the potential to kill them at level 3 slash 4. But because you win the jungle matchup favorably, you know most graves are going to start on the top side. So he's going to sequence down. Let's sequence down with him to the most gankable lane. Go in, use your E, don't travel through with the Q because if they flash on your Q, you'll be under tower. So just a chump is enough. If your bottom lane follows up, which they do, you're able to get some kills. Because of this, and because you have tempo advantage on the gank as well as bottom river prior, the graves cannot contest you. Immediately, you've stifled this entire game. Go watch the scuttle crab video that will explain the reason of why this is so important. Because it is. Denying this golden experience vision control really obliterates the jungle's mental. It makes the enemy team get tilted. And inherently, they will conduct more risks and be behind in experience for level 5, level 6 power spikes. Run across mid lane. You have prior. Wait for the wave to be pushed up so you can basically cheat across. You won't be detected. The Graves most likely is thinking, you know what? The Warwick's gonna do the crab. He ganked bottom lane. He'll fall back to his raptors and krugs. Well, you know the Warwick's thinking, you know what kind, sir? If I was a farmer, I would have done that. But it would take me 200 years, pun intended, to do the Raptors and Craigslist Warwick. Also, any jungler that does that is griefing. Double crab that guy, make him demoralized. We want the S+. As you saw, Graves was tilted, forced to fight for the crab. He died. The Graves saves his flash for another day. Who knows when? Ask double lift. And now the Warwick has control over that topside crab as well. That's step one. We prevented the jungler from doing what he wanted to do. We've denied him crabs, although the other kind is probably less painful than what just happened to him. The goal now is to keep that pressure up as long as we can. Look at the Cassio, look at the Clad. Maybe you rotate for a kill, but your Snake Lady's way too low on HP and she's forced to base. You cannot kill the Clad. Let's just simply fall back, take our Grump, take our Wolves, and reset. Now, as a quick flashback in this game, you would have noticed the Graves after respawning did the Raptors and then Krugs. If you know anything about my channel, you know I'm obsessed with pathing and I come up with strategies that enable you to have jungle flow. Going from Raptors to Krugs down to Wolves again is absolutely spaghetti pathing. It's a waste of time. You won't be able to get where you need to go first. Therefore, straight out of base to Krugs, Raptors, Wolves, Grump. You would now be where the Warwick wants to be before him. If you are the Graves, you must assume the Warwick would have fallen back to his tier 2 Grump, tier 2 Wolves first. You must know he'll be looking to sneak that dragon. You must be in position to get some kind of tempo advantage because you lost out early. Because the Zed has gone back to base, the Twisted Fate is level 6, the Warwick decides against starting up that dragon. Might as well use that time to get the Krugs off the map. And if we were tracking the Graves properly, which it looks like we were, then you can rotate very quickly to the fight. TP is committed by the Cassio. No kills again for the Warrigar jungler. However, because the Graves is low, yes, you could start the dragon, but let's push him back a little bit. Let's force his flash out. Very nice. And now you can fall back to the dragon. That is free and you have total control. 
The Graves imagined if he had not spaghetti perthed, he would have been bottle lane sooner and the Warwick would have been punished for not anticipating that and looking for the gang. He used that bonus time because of the Graves' mistake to take a Krug Camp, which means that we'll respawn at a higher level. Nice. Now let's throw in a question here. After the Dragon, the Warrior goes to the Raptor Pit. He now has two decisions to make. Can he go up to the top side, contest the Herald, invade the Graves and whatnot, or should he go down to the Krugs and look for more impact bottom lane? I think here definitely Pathing Upside would have been the better play. You have to anticipate a good jungler will punish you greatly for this Pathing, and yes, you might look to dive bottom lane, you might like to steal his blue, but the Graves will simply take his red, do the Herald, dive top lane, take your blue as well, and split the map advantageously for his team and hurt you greatly. You can still get the S plus in this game as Warwick with that decision, it doesn't really harm your MVP grading. The point of this is, if the enemy jungler is not that great at the game, and you may be in a lower rank, let's just say beneath Masters, you know, beneath Diamond, whatnot, then these junglers are not going to overly capitalize on the windows you give them, and you will get away with this like the Warwick does. It's no problem the Graves decides to waste his time, you run across mid lane to help out, you fall back to your blue, as soon as you start the Gromp, you see top laners fighting, getting low, leave the Gromp. Reactively path, get to the fight, grab a kill. Because we want to reset with all the gold we have from this long sequence, it's good to finish the quadrant, the wolves, before going back to base, which means once you're done with the bottom side, you can go back up and you will get those nicely respawned at a higher level. Yes, in theory, we want to do those heralds. Yes, in theory, we want to have all objectives, objective ping pong, but not every game is set up as such, and it's important we adapt to what's happening. Out of the base, we head to the bottom side. And you can see from the pings on the minimap, that is because Graves ganked mid, ran across, and the Warwick knew there would be camps up to be stolen, pings it, and wants assistant. What you can do is smite Q it to make sure you take it, or Q smite it rather, chase the Graves away, get a deep ward, and now as I said, yes, you can give up heralds for dragons, however, we don't have smite, and we still have a little bit of time before it spawns, which means you can use that to sequence the camp, the Krugs on the bottom side, and maybe even look to the lane gank for your ADC and support. The problem is, they died. Now, are we expecting any less from a bottom lane? I don't see how that's possible. They die. Warwick is fed. Warwick is in control of the game, and sometimes, whatever champion you run, you need to make a play. You need to make a triple kill. You need to just take over a situation to stop them getting an advantage from your team dying. And there's no other way to put it. If you watch the gameplay videos as you watch Warwick completely beast all over the enemy team, sometimes they just make plays, make triple kills, use their stats, use their lead, use their champion knowledge to outplay the enemy and gain basically game winning protocol. This is what makes an MVP S plus jungler. You have to know the limits of your champion and then translate those kills into objectives. And they do. Enough time has passed that the Raptor camp will be up again. Once again, remember live patch now. 2.15 is a respawn timer on those camps, so make sure you have a mental note of when that happens. At this point, the Warwick has a lot of gold. You want to reset. You want to try invade the Graves topside jungle. You want to try gank top lane, get a Herald, and really start to push this game away. So doing the Raptors and then Krugs is a quadrant reset once again. Back to base, spend your gold, and head to the top side. Now yes, earlier in the game, a Warwick really should have probably used the tempo advantage he had to secure the Herald to maximize plate gold. But because we went past the 14 minute mark, there was no real pressure to secure that and then shove towers just to get gold. However, because the Grave sequence topside, because he walked over a ward placed by a top laner, again, look for any visual cue of where the enemy jungler is, it was kind of very obvious he would want to go to the big, bold global timer that is the Warwick's blue. And once again, if you are stopping the enemy jungler from doing what they want to do, you're basically doing whatever you want to do, you have objective control and you have gank pressure, you should have a 2 to 3 level lead over them, which means we can afford to fight them 1v1. If the enemy top laner tries to help, you just kill him too. A 2v1 solo kill because you have such a huge lead, you spent your gold well, and you focus on what you could do on the map before you rewarded yourself with farm, and that's going to be so big in the coming weeks. Do your scuttle crab, invade the enemy jungle, kill them, take the objectives, and then do camps, especially in these particular moments. Obviously, we're farming early and looking for ganks. It's not, you know, a cut and dry strategy, but it's more, how are you thinking about the game? Can I do something before I farm? If not, yeah, go farm. But now Warrior can cut the top wave, take the Krugs, take the crab, take the void beetle, Sometimes you might want to use this Herald push a little later, but because Acacia is kind of behind, she's struggling versus the Kled, we have the Zed here. Let's kill the Kled, let's take the tower, let's activate the Herald. We've seen the Graves on the bottom side, which is why you can make the play. Apply pressure on the opposite side of the map so that the enemy team has to make an active decision about what they want to accomplish in this particular phase. And based upon the Graves' non-decision making the whole game, I don't think he's figured that out yet. 
I'm pretty sure this Graves is the kind of guy that eats steak for breakfast and Cocoa Pops for dinner. Now you'll notice that Warwick falls back into his jungle to do the blue before going back to base and he doesn't finish the quadrant this time. That's because you don't want to let a quadrant clear offset your objective timer. There's a dragon spawning. We want to reset, spend our gold, get the furs so that you can set up vision, make your pick, kill someone for no reason. But you don't want to do your grump wolves and I'll be forced to stay out with like 3 to 4k gold. We're not doing a YouTuber challenge. And now you cannot win those fights because you don't actually have an item advantage. This is really big in close games and why a lot of people get these huge leads like the Warwick and don't actually close out the games. Straight out of the base to the dragon. Once you've done that, if you see people that are low, they're fighting in the bottom side, it's good to rotate and clean up. And as I sometimes say with these carry games, even in the highest of elos, you're allowed one to two mistakes, one to two ints before you actually throw the game. The Warwick chooses to use this now, although he gets two kills at the same time, so it's not quite the same thing. However, because you are the carry, you don't want to die and force your team into situations where your lead doesn't mean anything because you are the one with all the gold. You are the one that's actually causing the game to be won. And at the same time, you want an S+, right? You want MVP, that means the enemy jungler has to be 10th and you have to have total control of the map. If you're dead, you can't do that. Now at this point, there's no real objective, but you do want to be near your team, you want to hover. You don't want them to get caught out while you're farming. You know, when they're looking to do something, it's important as the fed member, as the carry, that you are present. So ignoring the Krugs and maybe doing a Raptor's Wolves Grump is a good idea. If your team starts a fight or the enemy team starts a fight because they just want to run it down and give you some more cash monies, I think it's very important to rotate and try and turn the tides, but sometimes you have to do the calculations. And fortunately, while our Warwick is able to secure something, it's just a little bit of a second int and really you can't afford to do more than that. But I'm still highlighting in these hard carry games you have, you still can make mistakes and get away with it. It's just the higher elo you go, the less likely you're going to be able to do so. Now what happens over the next few minutes is simply put waiting for that Dragon Soul and trying not to overstep due to the fact that your team isn't really seemingly capable of handling themselves. We have some invading, control the enemy jungle, take it all, it's your jungle now, make sure you loop and take your camps also, push waves that your team are ignoring, that is something people don't do. And if your team continues to just be in the wrong place at the wrong time, please know your team fighting, know your target, the Kai'Sa in this case, take her out of the game, try and sustain as long as you can, exist as long as you can, don't mechanically misplay. If you're going to die in the situation, a 3 for 1 or a 4 for 1, that's okay. We can live with that because they're not going to get anything. And as you still have a long ways to go before full build, that's okay. And yes, sometimes there is no macro really to end games and in most elos there won't be. It'll simply be about who has the lead, who can stat check and who can control. I hope you noticed that Cassio decided to get the Ocean Soul instead of helping. I don't know, that's fine I guess. Most junglers do enjoy this soul. But essentially the next play now is you must push up waves, you want to win a fight and then do the Baron. If you can make a pick with your ultimate, do so, don't hold on to it too long, take someone off the map. Now you see your team going too deep, you have already died a few times, so simply pull back and wait for your time where you can actually control the fight or you have some of your team members join you. And the biggest problem with solo queues, people don't follow up on great engages. If the Cassio finally does something remotely useful and hits a nice ult, clean it up, use your E to tank all of Kai'Sa's damage, Red Smiter to reduce it as well, and then kill her. Three kills, triple kill, very nice. Four out of the five enemy team members were killed by our Warwick jungler, totally took over the game in these fights. Yeah, he died a few times, but honestly, sometimes as long as you have the huge numbers advantage and the outcome, it's not so bad. After that, you do the Baron, you go back to base, you run into their base, you shove it down their throats, and you either end the game or you force them to surrender. I actually really enjoyed the Warwick jungling in this video, a few mistakes obviously here and there, but overall because of the reads to deny the enemy jungler, gank and rotate to lanes, a lot of mechanical outplaying and using spells correctly, as well as supreme objective control, minus that one missed Herald. You received a whopping 10 on OP.GG and the Graves received 10th. S plus in the ranks, and if you focus on having these fundamentals and these principles in all your games, you will become a total carry jungler with the ability to carry, win, and climb, or simply just win flex fives, win clash, whatever you actually want to do. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you were able to enjoy and learn something. Please do like, share, and comment if you did. Don't forget to head to the gameplay channel if you want more in-depth Hyelo content from your champion's perspective. Keep your beards primed for an ocean soul, and as always, I will see you all in the next tutorial.